by name only. He's talking about the people who have become prosthetics in the church. He's talking about the area we can control. Our circle of influence. He's talking about the body of Christ and purifying the body. So-called brothers, if he is immoral or coveted or an idolater or a reviler. Let me go back. But actually, I wrote to you not to associate with any so-called brothers if he is an immoral person or covetous or an idolater or a reviler or a drunkard or a swindler. Not even to eat with such as one. Holiness is still right. Righteousness is still right. If you see these behaviors, there's a manner in which to address them. And if they do not turn away, because these folks may have tasted a, a, a piece of God and gotten the sweet goodness of God. Hallelujah. But uh, they've turned away and they won't repent. If they don't and they continue to do this, he says, don't even eat with these people. Twelve for what? Have I to do with judging outsiders? Do you not judge those who are within the church, but those who are outside? God judges. The scripture reads, remove the wicked man from among yourself. The wicked man from among yourself. Too many of us want to hold on to that wicked man. We're fighting battles with the world and they're worldly. He's not, he doesn't, there's no reason to fight battles in the world trying to get the world to be righteous and they're not even accepting Jesus as their Lord and Savior. You're wasting your time. You are battling a battle you should not, or fighting a battle you should not fight. Oh, did you try to get them into the body of Christ? They said, no, move on. You planted the seed. Why try to get the world to act righteous? You become, if you continue to, what does it say up here? I did not mean, verse 10, all, I did not at all mean with the immoral people of this world or with the covetous or swindlers or with idolaters, for then you would have had to go out into the world. Too many people have gone out into the world and they uh, made an alliance with a wicked president. Now we're seeing that repeat again. Oh, uh, let's hope Biden is able to do what he needs to do. But understand, uh, he's in the world. And if indeed he is in the body, hear what I'm saying. If he is in the body, and God placed him in that position. Continue to pray for him. Intercess on behalf of, in essence, the king. That we may live peaceable lives. But he's taken on an office that is rooted in the stronghold uh, that is covered uh, by the spirit of Pharaoh, which is demonic. Let's pray that he has an apostolic anointed to break free from what's going on. But let's not even men of Christ. They should not be your gods. That is idolatry. So let's lift up our brothers and sisters, but let's not make them gods. Let's lift up our brothers and sisters and keep God at the rightful place that he should be in. Hallelujah. Because if we go out in the world trying to make the world uh, behave like Christians, we will more likely, and we've seen it time and time again, open a door uh, that will allow the world in and cause us to be contaminated. And now we should be removed from the body of Christ. Oh, we got to go through deliverance. It's a protection please. Not everybody has the apostolic anointing to go out and break the world uh, and take territory there. Know your assignment and know your place. Stop fighting for offices that and giftings that you're not called to walk in because you can't handle the burden. You can't handle the weight. 
but you can handle the weight to where God has called you. Stop taking on battles that you do not need to take on. Some of you are feeling like you're drowned in ever the world's upon them. It's because you're not a prophet. God didn't call you there. You chose it. Someone spoke that over you and you said, yes, that sounds good. That's not just prophets. That goes for everybody. Somebody watching this is going to see this and that needs to hit their spirit. Hmm. Let's get ready to close this out. Hallelujah. This is the verse that we were going to hit that has two versions I'm going to do. And then we'll close on out. 2 Timothy 2, 14 through 19. Remind them of these things and solemnly charge them in the presence of God not to wrangle with words, which is useless and leads to the ruin of the hearer. Uh, many people who are walking in that old, familiar, demonic Pharisees and Sadducees spirit, uh, when you are speaking, they constantly want to hit you with the surface. Uh, uh, you didn't say this right. That's not how that's supposed to be said. That's not uh, what God, what does, that's the outer word appearance. Uh, oh, what does the spirit say? Stop arguing with these folks. They don't get the spirit in which God had you speak. You're human. You're going to mess up. You're going to say the wrong thing. You're not going to be perfect in your communication. But what is the spirit of the thing? It is the spirit that does the changing. It is the spirit that does the work. What is the spirit saying? What does the heart speak? Uh, what is the mind saying? What is uh, the inward piece of that word that's spoken? Hallelujah. I, I, I've heard people with a, a, a great educational intellectual ability speaking the word of God and they spoke it so eloquently and uh, oh, why wouldn't anyone follow them? Uh, uh, they knew how to rightly divide the word and they were digging through pieces. But then they had no power and no one got saved and there was no signs, miracles and wonders. Uh, it was a dead church, a sleeping church, a, a deprived church. But then I uh, heard a pastor who had uh, uh, initial grade school education level and he didn't know how to say all the words correctly and not all the words were put into place, but he was a man of God and he was able to speak the spirit through him. He allowed the spirit of God to work. It was the spirit in him, uh, the Holy Spirit, God above within him uh, who spoke the words even in that lack of education human education standpoint that the spirit went out and delivered folks uh, sign miracles and wonders followed he understood the spirit of what God was speaking and he allowed God with purity in his heart to speak through him we gotta get away from that spirit of Pharisees and Sadducees uh, that causes us to what does it say oh that last set that God hates uh, 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 and one who spread strife amongst brothers. Uh, that's the first thing these forms of godliness people do. Hallelujah. They want to go and say, wait, you didn't say this right. Look at me, look at me. No, I don't care that you're a prosthetic. Get out. Uh, remove them. Uh, remove the wicked. Uh, uh, let's go back to 2 Timothy. Let's hurry up and do this. Uh, be diligent. Th 15. Be diligent to present yourself approved to God as a workman who does not need to be ashamed. Accurately, rightly dividing the word of truth. Accurately handling the word of truth. But avoid worldly and empty chatter. For it will lead to further ungodliness. And their talk will spread like gangrene. Among them are uh, Hymenaeus and Philetus. Those are the two that Paul sent to Satan to be dealt with in hopes that they would turn away from their blasphemy. But, you know, that's a hope. It doesn't mean that it's going to happen. God said, people, uh, we do not wrestle with flesh and blood, uh, but understand sometimes uh, we do. And that's what happened. He, he didn't even wrestle with them. He just sent them to deal with. Um, I told you once, I told you twice, you keep doing it. All right. Uh, go deal with Satan. Go deal with your ills. Go deal. Let Satan reprove you. you you're not going to like it and let's hope you come back Paul was an apostle of reconciliation he was an apostle of order he was an apostle who 
uh, was a problem solver. And sometimes you just have to let go. You know, we got the saying, let go and let God, yes. But when you're in an apostolic anointing and you have governing ability, there's some things you have to let go and let Satan. Not in your life. I pray you're not having to do that with your life, but there are people. But you have to understand what you're called to do, what you have an authority to do, and walk in it specifically. All right, let's keep going. Uh, so these men who have gone astray from the truth saying that the resurrection had already taken place, that everything that God was doing is already done. And they upset the faith of some. They caused people to fall. They caused people to stumble by that, that, that false theology, false ideology, false Christianity. Nevertheless, the firm foundations of God stands having this seal. The Lord knows those who are his and everyone who names the name of the Lord is to abstain from wickedness. Let's read that in the message version. It says, repeat these basic essentials over and over to God's people. Warn them before God against pious nitpicking. That's what the Pharisees and Sadducees do. That's, that's that demonic spirit, that pious nitpicking, which chips away at the faith. It just wears everyone out. Concentrate on doing your best for God. Work you won't be ashamed of. Laying out the truth plain and simple. Stay clear of pious talk that is only talk. Words are not mere words, you know. If they are not backed by God, a godly life, they accumulate as poison in the soil. Hymenaeus and Philetus are examples, throwing believers off stride and missing the truth by a mile by saying the resurrection is over and done with. 19. Meanwhile, God's firm foundation is as firm as ever. These sentences engraved on stone. God knows who belongs to him. Steer clear of evil. All you who name God as God. Hallelujah. Are you being led by the fruit? Are you being led by the fruit of the spirit? Do you have the Holy Spirit within you? Your internal guide. Acts 1 and 8 says, the Holy, when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, you shall receive uh, power and ability. Hallelujah. Galatians 5, 22, 23. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against all these things, there is no law. I need you to understand exactly what God is doing in this time. He is clearing up the kingdom and he's trying to get you to walk in excellence. He's trying to get you to understand his mind uh, concerning every matter. We got to get away from moving in a way that we desire and only only move how God wants us to move. We need to identify his mind concerning every matter and know who is even in our circle. We got to rely on one another. Uh, when we have to skip up and uh, uh, certain things that happen to us, we may feel bruised and broken, not just physically, but emotionally. Who do we rely on? The body must be purified and cleansed and removing the faith. Uh, it says in scripture uh, uh, those with a form of godliness but not acknowledging the power therein uh, uh, avoid pe uh, uh, such people as this uh, avoid them it says in another scripture hallelujah it says remove the wicked uh, uh, we're, God's not playing with us we're too busy trying to fight battles in the world and we're doing nothing in the church uh, we're letting the wicked go about their ways read revelations one through three, uh, specifically uh, chapters two through three. Look what's going on there and see that it's happening in the church. We're too busy dealing with the world and trying to uh, uh, get the world to walk righteously when that's not what we're called to do. Uh, we're called to be saved. 
separated, be set apart, walk separate. And while we're walking separate, where we need to interact with the world uh, or to go and preach the gospel, to get people to Christ so that they may be saved and to, to take territory, uh, uh, but mainly so that we can live a peaceable life. Uh, God is calling us uh, to do his works and uh, so that uh, we as a kingdom can move forward so that God's will is done and his kingdom is going to take territory but you can't be distracted. God is doing some amazing things but what are you doing? Are you fighting the right battles or are you fighting only the battles uh, that you choose and desire in yourself uh, to fight? Uh, this is what my father told me to do uh, but Zechariah oh, hallelujah Zechariah hallelujah I got a hallelujah Zechariah 1 and 4 I think it's 1 and 4 1 and 8 hallelujah but that scripture clearly tells us, oh, hallelujah, that your fathers have failed you. Uh, they showed you some ways that weren't right. Uh, they had you uh, worshiping uh, idols. Uh, they had you counting censuses. Uh, they had you doing things uh, that weren't in the ways of God, uh, but they were in the traditions of man. Uh, and they led you down the wrong path. Do not be like your fathers. Oh, hallelujah. I don't like that version. Hallelujah. It was the NIV. Hallelujah. Let's do the NASB. Hallelujah. NASB. Where are you? There we go. Hallelujah. Four. It was verse four. Do not be like your fathers to whom the former prophets proclaimed, saying, Thus said the Lord of hosts, Return now from your evil ways and from your evil deeds. Do not listen or give heed to me, declares the Lord. But they did not listen or give heed to me. Uh, read it one more time. Do not be like your fathers to whom the former prophets proclaimed. Thus says the Lord of hosts, return now from your evil ways and from your evil deeds. This is what the Lord said through the prophets. But they did not listen or give heed to me, declares the Lord. Uh, they worshipped idols. They worshipped the collection plate. They worshipped numbers. They worshipped popularity. They worship importance. They worship uh, getting up in front of the people, showing and seeming like they're more important than they actually are. They worshiped uh, all these things that weren't of God. Uh, and God says, uh, you do not need to be like them. Uh, oh, but my loyalty. Oh, I can't do that. Uh, God's not calling you to rebellion. He is calling you to victory, set apart. He is cleaning house. And if you uh, tie your allegiance to the wrong people, you will be cleaned out too. God is raising up a new guard who understands that they must identify the mind of God in every battle. Uh, they have to understand, uh, they do understand uh, uh, that as I fight a battle, uh, is I have identified uh, whether or not it was from God or uh, uh, whether or not it was from self or, or even the past fathers. Uh, is this what God is calling me to do? Is this what God has spoken in my mind uh, to do? Is this what God has placed in my heart to do? And how does God want me to move? Stop fighting these battles within the church and be stand above. And if you are in a position to govern, uh, uh, be the one who governs uh, as an example that Jesus gives. Uh, be the one to uh, govern uh, like the apostles did. Uh, stop getting in the midst of every fight. Uh, stop trying to fight every battle on their level. <laughs> Hallelujah. Don't get down in the dirt with them. Uh, get where God called you and handle it like God. God speaks. The Bible has direction and the Bible has a path forward and the Bible demonstrates the victory and the prescriptions to victory. Are you choosing it? Uh, have you identified God's mind concerning every matter or are you taking a shortcut and said, I think I heard God? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you and we extol you. We lift up your holy name. 
We thank you for this word. Allow it to do the thing that it's called to do. We already believe it's already done. We already believe that this word you spoke right now was intended for the people who are viewing it and who will view it. We thank you. And Lord, let thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. We release ourselves to your will. We will identify your mind concerning the matter. Every matter. We're shedding off that old wine skin. We're getting rid of the old man and so we can step into the new and receive, receive that new fine wine. Hallelujah. We thank you. We glorify you. We magnify your holy name. Hallelujah. These battles, what battle? What battle are we fighting? Hallelujah. In your mighty meshless name, Jesus. Amen and amen. You all be blessed and I'll see you next time.